The People's Republic of China, the second largest economy, the most populous country, the superpower that makes almost everything in your household, probably even what you are watching this video with, is now gearing up for war. The last time something originated in China, the entire world went into shambles. What could be next? With the Chinese boosting up its military and increasing tensions among the global superpowers, is a war inevitable? Let's find out in this video. To begin with, China has several territorial disputes both across land and water, Taiwan being the one to get the most attention during recent times. There are several disputes that China has gotten into over time. As a result, there are several incidents that took place. One of the major disputes that China has is with India over its land border in the Himalayas. The countries even fought a bloody war in 1962, ending in a ceasefire that established the line of actual control. The Senkaku Islands in Tokyo, the Daoyu Islands in Beijing, and the Daoyu Tai Islands in Taiwan were disputed by Japan and China because of evidence of oil reserves. During the early 1950s, China invaded Tibet and claimed it as their own territory. Despite attempting an uprising in 1959, Tibet's spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, had to flee to India, where he set up a government in exile. These aren't all. China has had territorial disputes with Indonesia, Vietnam, Japan, South Korea, Laos, North Korea, Singapore, the Philippines, Brunei, Nepal, Bhutan, Mongolia, and Myanmar. But what could have possibly led to an attitude for the Chinese? Making enemies on all its fronts and claiming foreign territory as its own? Well, some of it could be traced down to their never again attitude. Hundred years of national humiliation which lasted from 1839 to 1949 has been time and time used by the Chinese Communist Party and is part of modern Chinese nationalism with its focus on the sovereignty and integrity of the Chinese territory. However, this was also used in deflecting foreign criticism of human rights abuses in China and domestic attention from issues of corruption and bolstering its territorial claims and general economic and political rise. During this period, China lost both its territory and its prestige to the imperial powers of the day. These experiences have changed China's relationship with the Western world and created a sense of unity internally, the power of which we could still see today. The end of the Chinese Civil War, in which Mao's Communist Party of China defeated the nationalist Deng of Chiang Kai-shek marked the end of the century of humiliation. Mao had declared that China had stood up, announcing the founding of the People's Republic of China. This was something that the future Chinese leaders would try to prove to the remaining world that China has stood up. This narrative has created a never again mentality in China. The century of humiliation is not only just a reminder of the past, but it is also considered as a warning as to what could happen. Is there a possibility of war? Well, the actions from the Chinese are definitely not relieving any political tensions. China conducted its largest military exercise as a retaliation towards the Western world as Nancy Pelosi, United States House Speaker, had visited Taiwan to not only offer but to show their support during this situation. China claims that those military drills were necessary and justified, even if some drills breached Taiwan's territorial waters. However, this wasn't all. Around Taiwan's northeast and southwest coasts, China had launched several Dongfeng ballistic missiles into the water. Several projectiles were fired into the Taiwan Strait. The People's Liberation Army has created artificial islands in the South China Sea and carried out military exercises there. Recently, top military officials stated that the People's Liberation Army must prepare for war in order to ensure China's interests, while Chinese General Secretary Xi Jinping was charting Beijing's policies for the next five years. Chinese Defense Minister General Wei Fenghe says the military is to maintain a high degree of vigilance, defend the best interests of the country, and must always be prepared for war. Xi has expressed to the party Congress that China will become more proficient in frequently deploying their military forces and in varying ways and hopes to stay as adaptable as possible while executing its operations. He further adds on this that this will help them better with their security and win local wars. 
intensification of military training under various combat conditions, force-on-force -force training, and training with the newest of technologies are a few plans China hopes to bring into actions. Xi has brought together Beijing's control over Hong Kong, hinting that the next could be Taiwan, and made several assertions over a large portion of the South China Sea. But does China have what it needs to back up their attitude and claims? Let's see if they do. China has one of the most modern armies in the world. China has the largest active military personnel in the world. The Chinese armed forces have around 2.2 million active personnel. Their defense budget is at 229 billion US dollars, which is around 7.9% higher than that of 2021. It's second only to the United States. For land-based missiles, China is also number one in this category. China has an estimated 1,200 conventionally armed short-range ballistic missiles, 300 conventional medium-range ballistic missiles, along with plenty of intermediate-range ballistic missiles, as well as ground-launched cruise missiles. The Chinese also have high naval prowess. The Chinese Navy has around 750 ships. The Navy also has two aircraft carriers in active service, and the Chinese Navy has an active helicopter carrier. China has roughly 80 submarines, 20 of these submarines are nuclear-powered, whereas the rest are diesel-electric submarines. China has nearly 4,000 active battle tanks with plenty in the reserve. There are nearly 3,600 infantry fighting vehicles, over 3,000 artillery, and roughly 2,000 multiple launch rocket systems. The Chinese army also boasts 4,500 aircraft. They include 1,700 fighter jets and 1,000 helicopters. China also has several stealth fighter jets. This amount of firepower shows that China is a formidable force. When it comes to nuclear power, China is said to have over 300 active nuclear warheads. Their intercontinental ballistic missiles can deliver nukes up to 15,000 kilometers and is capable of carrying multiple warheads and is able to target different locations at the same time. This is more than enough power for even the strongest to think twice, if not more, before entering into any altercations with the superpower. China is arguably a formidable force. So, shouldn't they be pursuing their interests by taking what they claim belongs to them? Well, not so fast. China has several fronts to cover and is actively engaged in too many. Air forces in Taiwan, foot soldiers in India and Myanmar, navy all across the South China Sea leads to a lack of mobility and all in all a difficult position for the Chinese. Moreover, their biggest ally, Russia, is already preoccupied with their war against Ukraine. An outright invasion of Taiwan would be a very difficult task and wouldn't yield any benefit to the Chinese. The war could take years or decades to be decisive, and this would warrant sanctions and pressures from a lot of fronts. China is also facing internal problems. The problem the Chinese have is what helped it become a global power, its economy. The Chinese economy is in the worst shape it has been in in a very long time. In fact, the economic progress was so good that China has never faced a recession since their economic reforms of 1978. However, the targets they had set for economic growth this year cannot be met. Youth unemployment has increased by 20%. This is extra alarming since one of the issues China faces is its aging population. The nation's mode of development, which has driven the nation to great heights, no longer works, and China is yet to find a solution. Credit bubbles that have formed over the past decades are now showing its effects on the economy. The real estate sector, which amounted to around 30% of the country's GDP, is now in ruins. Thousands of homebuyers have defaulted their borrowings on the ruined sector, and there is no long way to recover. Moreover, Chinese tech giants Alibaba and Tencent have lost a hefty figure of more than $1 trillion off of their market value during the past two years. This has also led to the laying off of thousands of employees from this sector. China could be moving into another recession. Never again could have a different meaning in this scenario. Plunging into a war at this time would be devastating for the Chinese. Starting a war would not be in the interests of other nations, and it would require a lot of investment from the Chinese. While facing internal issues such as a possible recession and an economic crash, a war might lead China to end up in the situation that China once was in something they would wish to forget, something the Chinese would never want again. What do you think? Would China ignore their internal issues and proceed to go for an all-out war? 
Or would they wait for their economy to heal and attack at the most opportune moment? Let us know what you feel in the comment section below.